So right now we're with Ghanaian forces who have just received intelligence that in the tree line behind me is a village that's possibly housing a violent extremist group. We just move and push forward. All right, so it looks like they're moving. They're about to make the assault on the village right now. The reason I'm not wearing a helmet and a bulletproof vest is because all of this is fake. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. This is Flintlock, a U.S. military training exercise that brings special forces from the U.S., the EU, and the U.K. to train soldiers from across Africa to defend their home countries from terrorism. Trainings like these have been held by the U.S. since 2005 as part of its so-called War on Terror. A main focus in Africa has been the Sahel Desert, an area where extremist groups have recruited fighters and launched international attacks. The U.S. has poured hundreds of millions of dollars of military aid into West African countries. France has deployed thousands of troops to those same places. But despite all of that, violent extremism in the Sahel is only getting worse. Tens of thousands of people have been killed. Over two million more have been displaced. And in many places, the international failure to slow the violence has led local militaries to take a more drastic approach. On at least 11 different occasions, groups of mutinous soldiers have either attempted or successfully overthrown their governments in West Africa. The most recent successful coup d'etat was in Burkina Faso. The government had failed to handle the growing number of militants linked with al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. The groups had taken over large parts of the country, raiding villages, imposing Sharia law, and then keeping the areas isolated by launching ambushes and planting IEDs. So in January, a military junta arrested Burkina Faso's president and announced their control of the country on state TV. La constitution est suspendue. Le gouvernement est dissous. Vive le Burkina Faso. Their message about reclaiming the nation's territory gave many people hope. The overthrow was led by Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Demiba who, like many of the other coup leaders, was armed and trained by American and European partners. But the U.S. has laws against providing military aid to a government that took power by force. So his coup immediately ended that support. Burkina Faso was barred from this year's flintlock, and Tabiba's promise to do what the last administration couldn't will have to be done without one of his country's most powerful allies. The decisions that Junta made are really unfortunate because they don't add to the security environment. They create opportunities for violent extremist organizations. Admiral Sands is the top commander for U.S. Special Forces in Africa. After the coup, it was his job to cut military aid to Burkina Faso's soldiers. Is it the purpose of the U.S. military to evangelize democracy or defeat violent extremism? There is no separation between what our country stands for and how we operate as the military. We are the country. We represent the values of the United States of America. Hundreds of millions of U.S. military aid has gone into countries in the Sahel to defeat violent extremism, yet over the past decade, you know, it's only gotten worse. Where is this money going specifically, and, and what, what's it doing? We can't just throw money at the problem in order to solve it. We do need to support the continued development of their military so they're more capable to meet these enemy on the field. By cutting the military funding to Burkina Faso, do you ever think about what the result of that decision might mean for the people that live there? All the time, I really do. We don't disengage uh, and turn them into a pariah state. That would be short-sighted, I think. We are prevented from types of engagement and training, and that's the law. But U.S. laws aren't protecting soldiers on Burkina Faso's front lines. Since the coup, insurgents have killed at least 75 troops. Sur le terrain pour tout le monde, faut pas que chacun négligeable. Vous connaissez déjà l'ennemi, donc donc 
la menace IED, c'est la plus grande menace qui nous attend. Et vous avez l'expérience, vous savez qu'ils sont toujours présents dans la zone. Donc, tous les chefs de l'Ima, tous les chefs de l'Ima ici, pour un discours, sont préparés pour le départ. After months of negotiation, we finally have been given rare access to embed with the Burkinabe army, and their mission today is to escort a group of maintenance workers to a site that was destroyed by militants. And the reason it takes 50 guys to do this is because they're often ambushed on this road in these villages right here. These electricity poles are a common target for attacks. They link the capital and the north of the country so one strike can leave entire cities in the dark. These guys are checking this village right now in case there's any possible threats hiding. commander tells us that he believes that this village and, and the one next door was occupied by militants, but they did find uh, things to build IEDs with, as well as syringes that they say uh, are used to shoot up drugs to keep them strong while they're out here not eating in the field. This is a crater left behind by an IED that exploded six days ago. You can see the remnants of the battle that ensued afterwards. Shell casings littered about. Donc voilà le poteau saboté en question. Veulent carrément isoler la ville pour montrer leur suprématie. Donc ils mènent des actions un peu partout dans la ville pour isoler les grandes villes. It seems like it'll be a long fight if it takes this much effort just to fix some electricity poles. C'est un ennemi à ne pas sous-estimer. Il est vraiment très lancé partout. Donc quand votre convoi n'est pas assez solide, facilement vous tombez dans une embuscade. Are you confident you're going to win? Oui, c'est certain. Notre destinée en dépend. On n'a pas d'autre pays que le Burkina, donc il faut nécessairement qu'on gagne. Two weeks later, on this same stretch of road, an attack killed 13 soldiers. For people in Burkina Faso, the threat isn't just extremists. It's also been their own military. For the past four years, soldiers have been accused of ethnically targeting, arresting, and sometimes executing civilians. The U.S. military cannot legally help forces who commit these types of crimes but it wasn't until January's coup that they ended their support. Why did you continue to support them if those were the allegations against them? I'm not tracking the allegations that you're talking about. Mm. Uh, we take any allegations of atrocities, of crimes, very seriously. We're not gonna engage with a partner force that participates in atrocities. But military support continued even while U.S. humanitarian funding helped a human rights defender expose the alleged atrocities. I work on the morning, and it's after the descent, in the afternoon, that I come to the bureau to evacuate certain urgences, to listen to certain victims, to receive the parents of certain victims qui passent régulièrement pour donner des témoignages. Dauda Diallo investigates human rights violations in Burkina Faso. Since 2019, he's documented around 700 extrajudicial killings 
suspected to be committed by the Burkinabe military. C'est des milliers de personnes même, et les personnes, les parents sont sans nouvelles de leurs de leur proches ou de leurs victimes qui sont arrêtées. When the military takes someone and disappears them, can you give me a percentage of how likely it is that their loved ones will ever see them again? Il faut dire que les chances sont très faibles. Les chances sont très faibles pour retrouver les personnes qui sont portées disparues. Non, Fatimata Sidibe's brother was at a market in their hometown when soldiers arrested him. Five days after soldiers took Sidi Bey's brother, her father went to the military barracks to find him. He was arrested too. How do you know for sure that the men that took your dad and brother were the army? So this is this is your dad. If you could send a message, if you could talk to the military who has your father and brother, what would you tell them? After leading the coup, Demiba appointed himself as the president of Burkina Faso. Since then, he's avoided the press and didn't respond to our multiple requests for interviews. So we decided to try and catch his attention on the country's most watched network. We're at the state-run television station in Burkina Faso, getting fluffed and buffed, as you can see. This is the station that he used to announce his coup d'etat, and Hopefully, he'll see our message and, and want to engage. Here we go. This week, I'm welcoming a special guest uh, for you. It's uh, Michael Anthony Adams uh, from uh, Vice News. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. The first question is you were able to go to Cote d'Ivoire at the Flint Lock uh, training place. Just tell us, how, how was uh, uh, your visit there? You know, what we found out is that the U.S isn't quite happy with how the fight against violent extremism has been going in the Sahel. I do understand that the military in Burkina Faso was also invited uh, to Flintlock. However, uh, they were disinvited after the coup d'etat. Right. In Ouagadougou, were you able to meet some military commanders, the hierarchy of the army? You know, we, we did get to speak with a number of uh, military figures, but the one person that we've been wanting to speak to, obviously, is Demiba. You know, he came to RTB, and this is the only time that we've been able to hear from him, is at this station. Yeah. Hopefully he'll engage with the press, okay. you know, to figure out what that plan is. We were told Demiba saw our call out on state TV, but he still ignored our request to speak with him. We were, however, granted the first ever interview with the commander he picked to oversee the country's counterterrorism mission. Why is it that there are organizations that have documented at least 700 cases of the military either disappearing or killing civilians. And it's continued to happen after the coup. In any case, I would be enchanted that they give me the proof that the military kills civilians. But in any case, I can tell you that those we kill are terrorists. Right now, 
if we give you the evidence, the hard evidence, names, dates, will you tell us where these people are and what has happened to them? Et porter la plainte qu'il faut pour permettre à ces justiciers-là de pouvoir mener leur travail comme il faut. Je crois que ça c'est la, la moindre des choses s'il y, il y pense vraiment. We presented the military with information about Sidi Bey's case. They would not confirm or deny that her brother and father were even arrested. Because the military overthrew the government, Western allies like the United States have taken all of their support away. $160 million in military aid, weapons, training, you name it, it's gone. So do you think that you've shot yourself in the foot a little bit by overthrowing the government and losing all of that support? C'est saluer d'avoir l'aide américaine que nous recevons. Souhaiter que le gouvernement américain puisse continuer en tout cas de soutenir la lutte contre le terrorisme. Voilà, parce que cette menace-là, elle est transnational, elle est mondiale. When we spoke to Admiral Sands, he tells us that all you need to do is get back to democracy. Then you can have that support back. Is that something that you're willing to do? Maintenant, nous sommes dans une diversification des partenariats. Voilà. Si ce que les Américains ne veulent pas nous donner, on espère pouvoir les avoir avec d'autres partenaires. Given the lack of foreign support and tying aid to democracy, countries like Burkina Faso may turn to new partners. Recently, desperate nations have turned to Russia, specifically mercenaries from the Wagner Group, who've been accused of war crimes in numerous countries. Are you worried the same thing might happen in Burkina Faso? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that we have to be concerned about this pattern, right, where we have insecurity in a country caused by violent extremist organizations, other folks in the population making a decision to launch a coup, and you see the Wagner group waiting in the wings to take advantage of it. Wagner is a destabilizing force, and everywhere they go, the countries end up poor, weaker, and less secure. The U.S. war on terror and its abrupt endings can be a destabilizing force too, and that may influence who nations turn to in the future. So, even if there's nothing today, it's always be vigilant during the maneuver. Because we know all the modes of the enemy, and we don't have to leave the next one. Is it good? Yes! Yes! Okay. So, good night. Thank you. Merci. 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 Mer